Hey everybody, this is Razion, a React developer with five years of experience and today I want to share with you how I make buttons at increaser.org. We'll look at different components that I use and hopefully you find something that you can then take away and bring into your project. The most obvious example would be landing page. Here we have two buttons that share the same component. So if we click on one of them, we could also see some examples. And this is also about pretty much every clickable element in Increaser based on this unstyled button. Uh, it has cursor pointer, it removes margins, borders, and here it's a bunch of different uh, attributes. Here is meat and potato of this video as the main button components that we already saw on the landing page. So it basically is a styled component. Inside of it, we show either children or spinner. That's simple. What property does this component has? It combines a few types. So the first one is button HTML attributes. So for example, on click property and stuff like that. Then we have S prop that we pass to style component. The most common use case would be um, a button that actually a link. So we have a link component that leads somewhere. Inside of it, we have a button, but we don't want to click um, to make this button a button. It should be just a diff, but it should look like a button. In that case, we will pass S equal to diff. And then we pretty much forward uh, properties of the styled component container. We only uh, set height and kind to default values, so they're not required. Now let's take a look at the container props. The first one is obvious, it is button kite that could be either primary or ghost. Uh, primary button would have a solid background and ghost would have a transparent background with a colored border. Then we have three properties that defy the size and shape of a uh, component. It's a, it's a bit different approach, usually we would have something like one size property that would have um, small, medium and large values. Uh, but at Increaser, I decided to go this route instead and then have uh, other components that built on top of it and define uh, strict parameters. Um, because in some situations, it makes sense to make button a little bit different from, uh, from others, especially after that we have color. So this one is quite interesting. As we can see, it is a string value. So it's either primary, secondary, and so forth. And we use it by having this k of type of expression. And button colors is basically an object that consists of name of a color and then HSLA value. So if you go here, we could see that HSLA is simply an array of four numbers. Okay, then we do not allow any possible colors that we have in the theme, but instead we define a set number of colors. For example, in this case, we change the name because um, this name doesn't make any sense in the context of a button. Also, there's like three extra colors. We saw them on the landing page to represent button for every type of uh, or auth provider. After that, we can modify those HSLA values to create hover effects. We'll see it uh, a bit later. And finally, there are three optional parameters um, that define if button is rounded, if it's disabled, or if we show a spinner on it. Uh, the most interesting part is this style component container. The first part is obvious. We want to center element. Then we set height and border riders. So height could be either string or a number. Uh, in order to convert to CSS unit, we have this helper that checks if type of a value is a number. In that case, we would add pixels. Otherwise, we return an initial parameter. Then we use calc CSS function to set border radius. So we basically divide height by six. And because height could be not only pixels, but uh, any other CSS unit, we use calc instead of um, dividing right. Horizontal padding 
the same situation, we use this helper. And if we scroll a little bit down, you can see that we only set uh, horizontal padding if it's provided, or in case there is no fit defined, we set it uh, to 20 by default. We made font weight equal to 500 to make it a bit bolder. And then there's um, properties for cursor. So if it's loading, we show weight, otherwise it's pointer, and if it's disabled, it's initial. Then we set a opacity if it's disabled, so it's not looks like a clickable um, element. And here we have default transition CSS. It's a simple one. Uh, it said transition to this value. And after that, we have kind specific styles. So let's check them out. Uh, primary one. Here we have a background and we use this helper to convert HSLA on color to a proper CSS value. So we take this array and then we create this HSLA string. And we use regular text color for text. Then if the button is not disabled, we want to have some hover effect. And to do that, we use this get dimmer color variant. How does this work? Since our color is HSLA array, we can modify any component of it. So in case of a dimmer variant, you want to decrease lightness. So we can pass this decrement parameter and then by using get color variant, we modify this value and return new HSLA color. So modifier is an R object to which we can define um, as a one uh, modifier. In this case, we only have a lightness modifier, but we could have more because modifier is a partial of records that consists of HSLA keys. So it's as a HSLOA and then a function that would generate a new value. With this approach, we can easily create new variants and that's really nice. And uh, okay, so that's about primary. And here we have ghost, so background transparent. And here we also use get color variant. And instead we set regular uh, we set alpha to regular text alpha uh, because there could be a color with uh, um, transparent component, but it will look weird for button to have a transparent text. So in that case, we make sure that it's almost uh, non-transparent, so the value is 0 0.9. Uh, then we have border, and if, oh, again, if button is not disabled, we want to have hover effect. So border color becomes lighter and background is get almost transparent color variant. So here we set alpha to 0 0.15. So it's almost transparent, but we could still see the color. And yeah, that's all about button component and then we built on top of it. So let's see how it works. Here we have submit form button. Uh, and here we limit number of properties to make this component consistent. So every form button looks the same. Uh, so we could pass is loading on click is disabled and text. And that's it. And that here we simply use our existing button component. Then we have um, like clickable text that is also a button. For example, here text button. Here we use unstyled uh, button and use text components that I talked about in previous video. Uh, then we have uh, shy text button. This button we don't pe want people to click in, like ask for a font or skip a s step on the boarding flow. And here's like icon with text button. Here we also use button, uh, but we define that we want to have icon and text. And in creators, there's no none that many use cases where we have a clickable icon. So it's only one case where we have a pop-up and we want to show this uh, cross sign so you can close this pop-up and if there would be more cases i would create a separate component called uh, circle icon button but here you have only one use case so it is circle close icon button 
And here we have this container and close icon that is SVG. So that's all about buttons. So we have this um, fundamental component and then we build up on top of it uh, to create different types of buttons. So regarding outline, um, we have this place uh, in the layout component. It's still JavaScript, uh, but anyway, the idea is that we have a listener for K app and when a person press tabs, uh, we enable outlines by removing focus not visible um, class. So that's an idea behind out. That's all. Stay productive. Take care.